You know, I was thinking all the way back to like the Hollies. When you were in there and you started to write music and you started to get experimental with your music, that's why you left the Hollies. They, yes. were, they were being mean to you. No, they weren't really being mean. They were just content. They were content to have every single going to the top ten. When but you that, wrote this song, the Hollies were like, yeah, that's too experimental. This, I'm talking about... Ah, King Midas King, in reverse. King yes. Midas in reverse. You wrote this, you brought it to the Hollies, and you said, let's do this. And they said, dude, we just want to write hits. What, what is this? Yes. If you could only see me... Was that the last straw for you? Were you like, that's yeah. it, I'm done? Yeah. You knew it. it. Was, it well, a couple of things happened. That... You know, they didn't want to do that. I'd actually written Marrakesh Express, and somewhere in the bowels of EMI, Abbey Road, there's a track of the Hollies doing Marrakesh, and it sucks, right? Wow. So those two things, they wanted to do an album of Bob Dylan songs in Las Vegas kind of brass kind of, you know, it sucked. Mm. So, so you're saying you brought them Marrakesh Express, mm -hmm. and they... Didn't think it was going to be a hit. Oh, my God. One of the biggest hits for Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Correct. And you just, did that stick in your craw? And one day when you, when you finally were set up with Crosby, Stills, and Nash, you brought it to them and you said, look, guys, let's do this. And they were probably like, yeah, this is it. Let's but that, do it. That, that's why I'm, I'm, I, uh, you know, I'm so bonded to Crosby because he saved my ass. Because when you refuse to um, record uh, what we consider to be decent songs, it shakes you to your core as a musician, as an artist. You think, I must be wrong. If they're not doing it, I must be. But then Crosby said, come over here. When you were with the Hollies, they stifled your creativity. Mama Cass introduces you to Crosby. Uh, Crosby. You and Crosby vibe immediately. Indeed. Do you just go off somewhere and play together? How does this uh, vibe No, occur? we didn't, actually. Crosby called me one day and he said, come on, I want you to go up to my friend Peter Talk's house. Peter was, of course, in the monkeys. And we opened up the door of the house and, of course, this incredible cloud of smoke comes out of the front door. <laughs> right. And there's this kid pounding the shit out of the piano. And I'm trying to listen to this kid because it's great. And Crosby's nattering at me, and I say, wait a second, I want, to, I want to hear this kid. He goes, if you'll just shut up, that's who I want to introduce you to. His name is Stephen Stills. Oh, wow. And Stills, what was he doing at that point? He, um, the Buffalo Springfield had broken up. Oh, I see. So he was free. Yeah. He free, was free agent. Yeah. So, much of, so much of this depends on timing, right? Because once you get into a, a band and a, a record deal and all that... He's With different record companies, yeah, right? So that's when the three of you said, hey, let's sit down and maybe write a few songs together, see if we can do that. Is that when you played in Marrakesh Express? No. No? What happened is I came from London to Los Angeles to be with Joni, right. and David and Stephen were at dinner. And after dinner and smoking a big one, you know, David says to, to Stephen, hey, play Willie that song. And so they sang You Don't Have to Cry, which is a great Stephen Still song. Right. They did it two-part. I said, wow, incredible song. Do me a favor, sing it one more time. They looked at each other, kind of shrugged, and sang it one more time. They got to the end, and I said, okay, bear with me. Yeah. One more time. I had my harmony down. I had the words remembered. Whatever vocal sound Crosby, Stills, and Nash has was born in 40 seconds. Wow. That's crazy. Crazy, right? Yeah, it's unbelievable.